What's up guys, Caleb here with another installment of Reality Check and today we are talking about the NZXT Kraken X52. Let's jump right into it. Firstly, just want to give a big shout out to our boys over at NZXT who gave us this product so we could review it. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So me personally, I don't know too much about building PCs. I understand components, I understand how they all work together to form the whole and what components are better than others. And I have a basic understanding of the numbers, but I don't really know too much about components in themselves. So I wasn't too sure how we're going to do this review, but it speaks for itself. We just popped it in one of the cases here at Reality Check, checked what the temperatures were before at tilts and at idle, and then checked what they were after at tilt and idle, and there was a significant improvement. Firstly, let's talk about the environment that we ran these tests in. So first things first, it's got an AMD Ryzen 5 1600, which isn't the hottest CPU out there, and it comes with a pretty decent stock fan. And the case we were using was the NZXT H500. It does have some thermal issues due to the panel gap and then the solid front, but not a bad case all in all. The last thing to mention here is that these tests were done at an ambient room temperature 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's talk about the idle and normal usage temperatures of the Kraken X52. So firstly, without the Kraken X52, with just the standard fan, we were hitting ambient temperatures of roughly 50 degrees Celsius. Pop the Kraken in and that drops all the way down to about 26, which is a huge improvement. I mean, the number speaks for itself. If you used it for a little while and we're just doing some normal tasks, email checking, stuff like that, your processor isn't gonna heat up a little bit, but the max temperature it's gonna get to with the Kraken installed is about 42 degrees. We also thought to test the NZXT Kraken X52 with something a little bit more strenuous. So running a Premiere Pro Exports, which is gonna use as much of your CPU as it possibly can and get it up to high temperatures, we still saw a crazy improvement in the temperatures it was running at. With the standard fan installed, we saw a temperature of about 75 degrees when running an export. And once we popped the Kraken in, that dropped all the way down to about 53. That's roughly 20 degrees difference. And that is a huge difference and a huge improvement to the overall cooling of your PC. And then something to take it to another level, to test it as far as we possibly could, we used Blender. So we ran an export through there and that's gonna test it as much as it possibly can, even more so than games would, because it's gonna sit at 100% for long extended periods of time. With the Blender export, it showed us the most performance improvement. So with the standard fan running a Blender export, we were sitting at about 96 degrees. Pop in the Kraken and we drop all the way down to 50. So that is huge. And that's the area where you want it to perform the best, when your computer's under the most stress, when your CPU is performing as hard as it possibly can. That's where the cooling really matters. And that is a serious difference. So at the end of the day, that's actually what really matters. You just want to know, is it going to keep my CPU cooler than the standard stock fan? And the proof is in the pudding. It absolutely does. You're going to get better cooling with the CPU. On top of that, they have a couple of aesthetic little tricks that they've thrown into this entire cooling system is that it's got like an infinity RGB wheel. So there's obviously like an RGB strip and there's like mirrors or something. I don't actually know how they're achieving this, but you look into it and you're just staring and staring into like a chasm of RGB. So it looks really, really cool. Now what's cool about this cooler is that it comes is that it comes in a whole, like you get, you get different options for radiator sizes. So we've got the 240 more version. You also get a 120 and a 360. So you can kind of spec it differently in accordance with what size your case is. Aside from that, there's not really much to say about it. It's actually just a really dope CPU cooler. It's very easy to install. It actually also even has mounts for AMD and Intel users. And it comes in at a fairly affordable two and a half, roughly two and a half thousand Rand for this 240 more version. Obviously, if you jump it up to the 360, you're gonna be looking more along the lines of like 3000 to 3,500, but not bad considering how well it performs. Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this installment of Reality Check. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this cooler and if you really need one, because I imagine a lot of people are having issues with temperature just in jail. It's just such a problem with everything. Don't forget to hit like, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time for another installment of Reality Check. Peace!